You made it, Sol here, and today's video is going to be 5 tips for new Darktide players. Darktide has exploded in popularity thanks to social media and the success of Vermintide 2, which I have almost 600 hours and over 100 hours between the past two betas and the live early access beta of Darktide. I wanted to make this guide because we have around 60,000 players and even more enjoying this game every single day. That is quite an achievement for Fat Shark. And with that being said, of course there's going to be a lot of new players that don't know what they're doing, that haven't played Vermintide, and here are some of the easiest and the best tips I can provide for you that'll help you make your games a lot easier and help you clutch some serious hardcore moments. If you have any other tips that have helped progress you through this game a lot easier, please be sure to let everyone know down in the comments. Tip number one, there is a sound cue when you're about to be hit from behind. Your block works in a 360 degree angle, so this will help you swap to your melee weapon or press the block button to avoid damage really quickly. You should have enough time to block unless you are playing with your sound off, which I highly suggest that you do not. This game heavily relies on sound cues and you will be a liability on your team if you are blasting music or just not paying attention. Tip number two, enemy spawns are literally everywhere including the doors that you can't enter and sometimes spawn out of thin air. I'm gonna just slow him down. The door? That's, that's intended. This means that you need to proactively swap your weapons back and forth and always be looking behind you after using your gun for a short time. This tip is heavily for the veteran sharpshooters and the psychonetics because most of their attacks are range and that's where they're most effective. A lot of people seem to be hating on the veteran sharpshooters right now because they take all the ammo and they just sit in the back and shoot, while it's always taking damage from behind and dying in the back. So, unless you like to lose toughness and your health, it's better to keep swapping weapons from time to time and always looking behind you and looking out for your teammates too. Usually the people that die the fastest are the ones who charge in or the ones always in the rear because you know what I say, those who stay in the rear take it in the rear. Tip number three, reloading has multiple parts. If you're able to reload one third or two thirds of your weapon during the animations, the next time you swap weapons, it will continue where you left off. Very powerful during downtime in the midst of a horde because there's always going to be a special that comes up from behind you and any of the doors that you see next to you. Tip number four is learning if efficient melee inputs. I know a lot of people just like to swing their attacks and keep clicking left click or light attacks and heavy attacks randomly, but if you want to be efficient and actually last in the higher difficulties on level 4 and level 5, you need to learn these. A lot of melees have good horizontal strikes or verticals. During hordes, you want to cancel your recoveries with a block and restart your attacks. This is very beneficial for weapons that for the first two strikes have amazing horizontal cleave. Then the third one is a horizontal aiming for the head, which is nice in some situations, but for hordes, you want to be crowd controlling, you want to be pushing, and you want to be dodging. And of course, you don't want to be attacking 24-7 as that's the best time for enemies to hit you that aren't being cleaved at that moment. So inputting a block after the second strike will reset your attack pattern so you can rinse and repeat and clear hordes with your teammates while pushing them and allowing them plethora of space to deal more damage. Tip number five is that toughness is not a shield. Toughness is basically there just so that you can take some range attacks and go into cover. In Vermintide 2 you would have temporary health and this would essentially act as another bar of HP that you could use while you were attacking enemies. Even at higher levels this was incredibly powerful and it would make the game a little bit mundane to play because all this temporary HP would just go away and you wouldn't realistically lose any health in the first place because your health was already low. Whereas the toughness system, melee attacks are allowed to chip through your health through the toughness or your armor, forcing you to actually play a little bit better and not mindlessly take damage. Since the addition of so many ranged units, toughness is basically a safety measure so that you don't have to take too much range damage, but it also help you learn to use your second head. And we have one more notable mention that I think will help a lot of players out, and that is learning specific sound cues for certain specials. Now obviously we know the mutant who literally is screaming on the top of his lungs and running from miles away. You can hear him and you can see him when he comes. The only issue is that when there's three of them, that is a big problem. These two are really no issues when it comes to sound cues and distinguishing where they are in the map. Bombers are a different story and I think these are one of the most dangerous characters in the game because of how much crowd control they actually do. Because if you're in the middle of a fire, they will take all of your toughness away and I'm sure many of you have heard but when the scab bomber decides to unpin his grenade you will hear the ping and as soon as you hear the ping you should expect the grenade to land at your feet this ping is actually very loud and as soon as you hear it you need to look for him right away Stop, stop, <laughs> 
<laughs> the only other significant special that we probably have to worry about is the trapper and the flamers. There's two types of flamers, the green flamers, which is the chaos fire, I do believe, are the ones that shoot in a straight line, while as the red fire, which is the male variant, I believe, are able to slightly turn their flames, so you have to watch out for that. The trappers, sometimes you can't really tell these two apart, but if you hear whispering or cackling or high-pitched voice talking behind you, you should probably turn around as fast as possible. And you made it to the end of the video. I hope these tips did help you in some way, and if it did, the Omnisaya favors you. If there's any other helpful tips you'd like to give, be sure to put them down below as these are fairly broad and for new players, the ones that I've given. So if you have in-depth ones, that would be great. Perhaps I'll make an in-depth guide as I'm closing up to way more hours than I should have in this game, but the game will officially be released soon, so you'll have that to look forward to. Thanks for watching, as always, everyone, and more Dark Tide coming soon. Bye bye. See you later.